Every spoken word of God releases grace and imparts life. You are about to experience an impartation of God's great grace to bring a great transformation in your life. A mark of God for signs and wonders, proof of Him. Get ready for a supernatural visitation as you receive God's anointed word from all around fruitfulness with Pastor David Olawale. People may disapprove you, but when God approves you, nobody can disapprove you. Now, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which He is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Have a blessed view. Amen. Hallelujah. I like to appreciate God for today and the grace of God that has kept us. The Bible said, the mercy and unfailing love of our God, they never cease, they never fail. They are new every morning. I want to appreciate God for His new mercy over you today, for you, your family, to see the bright new day. And I pray that this day will yield greatness, favor, light, life, beautiful things for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for somebody watching and you're sick in your body today, I ask that the healing power of God will touch you and set you free in Jesus' name. We are back on our message to the seven churches today, and I want to continue to look at the second church that the message was spoken to, and it's important that we look at the state of this church and, and see what God has in store for you. And like Jesus did call, concluded for the church at Ephesus in verse 7 of Revelation chapter 2, he said, He was and here. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. I pray that you will be partaker of that tree of life together with him on that day, because you will overcome in Jesus' name. And to the second church we want to address today is in Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. The Bible said, And to the church or the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, this thing says the first and the last who was there and came to life. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus speaking here again. I like just to take a look at the introduction Jesus gave about himself each, to each of these churches. It's so powerful. Such a powerful understanding you need to have. He said, I am the Alpha, the first and the last. He was dead and he has life. And he came back to life. And therefore, know this for sure, that no matter what the church goes through, the church will stand in life. Because we have the life himself sustaining the church. The Bible said in John chapter, chapter uh, 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In the book of John chapter 11, when he came to the tomb of Lazarus, he said to the sister of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. He is a resurrection and the life. So the church of the end time is a church that's going to carry that Christ life. I always say, what is the meaning of a church without Christ life? What makes a church is the life of Christ. And it came back to life. And so therefore, if there's any dead thing in your life, bring them to Christ in their life. If there's any thing that you want him to bring alive, and you want to make to be active again, Bring them to Christ and He will make them to live. Because He came back to life. He conquered death once. And He has conquered death for you to have life. In John chapter 10, verse 10, He said, The team does not come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. Only Jesus can say this. And so if you haven't given your life to Him, why not extend your wretched, poor, sinful life and receive his own eternal abundant and receive his own precious life that he has for you and i am glad that he introduced himself to the church as minor in this way in verse 9 he came to the church and said again i know your works just the way he said to the church at ephesus he knows your work he knows your tribulation and poverty but you are rich 
And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but they are a synagogue of Satan. Now I like to tell you today, and this is a word for the church, Jesus knows everything about you. He knows what's going on in the church and outside of the church. He knows, he knows your state, he knows your tribulation, he knows your poverty, even though you are rich. Excuse me a moment to talk about our riches in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, we have all things. When we have Christ, because he became poor so that we can be rich, in him we have access to all things. So in Christ Jesus, you are blessed. You are highly favored. The Bible said in Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, that Christ in you is the hope of glory. So Christ in you, make you to be rich. Make you to be full of abundance of all things. And therefore, whatever you possess in the natural is not your true identity. Your true identity is this. In Christ Jesus, you have all things. The Bible said in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, that he who spared not his own son, he spared not his own son. How much more will he not through his son freely give us all things? So you have all things in Christ Jesus. And I'd like you to be encouraged and believe that you are rich and say to yourself, I'm rich. The scripture said, the book of Joel said, it's a letter rich say, I'm a letter poor rather, say, I am rich. And you are rich in Christ. And he came to encourage the church and smile and say, you are rich because of the great, glorious thing that Christ has prepared for you. Because of the glorious things that Christ has given to you. Because of the great promises that we possess through faith in Christ Jesus. So we are rich. We have all things that have made, been made for us in Christ uh, Jesus. And he said to the church, he said, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jew and they are not. But they are synagogue of Satan. You know who the Jews are? The Jews are the people of promise. They are the covenant people of God. And you see, certain people identify with not just the Jewish covenant, that he made with the covenant he made with the Jews, but also certain people identify with the covenant of our new birth in Christ Jesus and identify with the church and tell us we are members of the church. But you see, the way they do, the way they live, the way they act will tell you they are not. And so if your church is <laughs> comprised of people like that, this is part of the end time church that we are looking at. There are certain people who claim they are part of the church, but indeed they are not. And the Bible said, by their fruit, we shall know them. And so if they are around you, don't get yourself disturbed yet. Don't leave the church because of them. Don't even deny it. In the parable that Jesus gave about the seed sown among the tears, he said, look, leave the tear to grow with the wheat. But a day of harvest is coming, and where they will be separated. There's a separation coming, where God will distinguish between those who serve Him and those who are not serving Him. Time will tell. Even though they come to church, they speak in tongues, they lift up holy hands, they do great things like every other person would do in church, but they are synagogue of Satan because of the fruit they bear, because of the things they do. They are the one who incite division. They are the one who incite fornication, immorality. They are the one who bring things into the body of Christ that are not glorifying to God, even though they claim they are part of the church. And if you have ever met them, don't let that make your own faith to be shaken. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Focus your attention on it. When we come tomorrow, I'll be dwelling uh, more on the message to the church at Smyrna, and we will be concluding on that. I pray for you today that you will not be deceived and grace for you to discern and understand that people who come around you, they are also part of what God will use to build you, that your faith will be built on Christ. And I pray that every struggle, tribulation, trial in your life, the Lord will set you free and bring you help and turn your poverty into abundance and send help to you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. See you tomorrow. We are sure you have been blessed by the word of God today. Our mandate is to reach out to the nations through teaching and preaching of the word of his grace and love to build a great people. 
making them habitable for the Spirit of God and giving them their inheritance in God. You can visit our website for more information. Call the number on the screen for spiritual help and prayers. This broadcast is coming to you by the financial contribution of our covenant partners. You can also be a covenant partner in reaching the nations with the word of His grace. Call us today. Until we come your way next time, keep the faith and keep on winning with Jesus.